Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It is Wednesday. Good evening. Good evening. And good evening. Good evening. Yes, it's Wednesday. Hump day, Wednesday. Hump day. You had a great day today. Bless the Lord. Oh, that's my phone. Sorry about that. Hope you had a great day. I'm going to go ahead and share this. And for those of you who are watching, go ahead and share now. Amen. And grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles and something to write with because because we have... Um, you have a little assignment for you today. Bless the Lord. Yes. So grab your Bibles. Grab something to write with. Okay? And get ready to be with me for the next 35 minutes. Amen? Hello, Miss Deborah Bryant Payne. How are you? Hello, Minister or Executive Pastor Al. Now you make sure you're paying attention on the road now. Just listen to me. You don't get your paper and pen out. Okay. You you have permission to just listen today. All right. Bless the Lord. How is everyone doing? I want to formally welcome you to Pursuit for His Presence Ministry Bible Study for today, Wednesday, February. Hi, Felicia. That's my oldest sissy. To Bible study, Wednesday, February the 7th of 2024. Bless the Lord. Amen. So if you are just hopping on, go ahead and share. I'm dark down here. Go ahead and share. Oh, here we go. Go ahead and share at this moment. Okay. And then I want you to get your Bibles. Or if you, you know, like to use your phone as a device, don't, don't click onto the thing so you can keep listening to me. Um Go and get something to write with, okay? Amen. Because tonight, we're going to do a little checkup. We're going to do a little checkup on how you living. What? How you living? What? How you living? In living color. Are you living in living color? Okay, just kidding. We're not going to watch that show. But I just want to make sure. Um, we want to do a little checkup. How you living? How, how is everything going? How are you living? All right, so let's start. I'm going to start on this evening with declaring some things over you, okay? And I'm going to be reading from God's Creative Power by Charles Caps. Bless the Lord. Okay, I'm going to start declaring some, um, some declarations over you. Um, the first one would be to eliminate debt. And if that is you, you just receive it. Amen? Again, so in the name of Jesus and on the authority of his holy word, I call your debts paid in full. Debt, I speak to you in Jesus' name. Be paid and be gone. Dematerialize and cease to exist. I now declare that all of your debts, your mortgages and notes are paid in full canceled and dissolved now in Jesus name. Now I'm going to declare if you if there's money owed to you. You know how you can um they say that you can contact your state and your state will let you know whether or not there is some money laying around. Well, I'm going to declare that over you to collect money that is owed to you. Ready? Here we go. Jesus, whatever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Therefore, we lose, I lose the finances that are owed to you and your household. And I call this money in so that these accounts are paid in 
Jesus name. Amen. Now I'm going to declare over your bills paid, being paid on time. Amen. All right. So God supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God is the source. God is the source of your supply and you have more than enough to pay your bills on time. Bills be paid in full according to Philippians 4.19. Now this is a declaration for those who of you who are, are designed to sell something or if you want to lease something or if you want someone to buy something. And this is how, what you say. Listen to us. Property, deeds, leases. Anything that the Lord has told us to sell, we are talking to you. Jesus said that you would obey us and you are going to be a blessing to someone. So we call you sold. We call the least um, picked up and sold in Jesus name. All right. If you declare to if you want to bribe property, I decree and declare that I call those things that be not as though they were. I call now the property that fits your very need. If you desire. So I'm going to say this again. If you desire to buy a home, if you desire to buy um, a car or if there's anything that you need to buy for your house it could be an HVAC system glory to God God th th you can release faith for an HVAC system or if your car needs repairs whatever it is that you need to purchase in Jesus name we call those things to that be not as though they were we now call that particular thing that property that Thing that fits your needs and desires and will be a blessing to you to come into your hands in the name of Jesus. Kingdom of darkness, get your hands off of God's chosen people's things. I call you to to me now. I call those things to you now in Jesus name and declare that God's highest and best are done in this manner and that the angels are now working on your behalf according to Romans 4 and 17. Now I'm going to declare to remove hindrances from things that God has told you to do in your life. God, your word says that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth is loose in heaven. Therefore, on the authority of your word, God, we bind every force that has set itself up against your financial prosperity, your health um, prosperity, your relational prosperity, your marriage, against your children, against everything concerning you, against your career, Lord God, against everything that concerns you. We hereby declare all curses against you null and void and harmless. We, I called you the redeemed from the curse of poverty, lack, and having less than. I declare that you are free from oppression. And now, I call you free from oppression. And now, I loose the abundance of God and all that rightfully belongs to you to come to you now under the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ in a perfect way, swiftly. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Now I'm going to decree and declare over you to call things that be not as though they were. We're going to call your paychecks. What We're going to call whatever kind of income you have to increase in Jesus' name. So Heavenly Father, we decree and declare and we call for raises as we honor you with the first fruits of our increase, which means I'm talking to tithers, I'm talking to sowers, I'm talking to those who give into the kingdom of God. We give thanks for, for these jobs and bless our employers in the name of Jesus. We now decree and declare that this, these checks we receive, this compensation we receive is multiplied and increased, abounding to your account. And now you are richly rewarded for your work, both creatively and financially in the name of Jesus, according to Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Now let's decree and declare to increase 
your investments, your stocks, your bonds, and your bank accounts. Glory to God. Your IRAs, your 401ks, your 401b3, whatever it is you had as your retirement. Come on, let's call it in. Come on, let's call it to increase. In the name of Jesus, bring your supply of faith. All you have to do is say amen in chat. Amen means and so be it. The promises of God are yes and amen. So we, I decree and declare over you and call for abundance as we honor the Lord with our capital and our sufficiency, our storage places. Thank you, Lord God. Our investments, our bank accounts, our retirement funds, our 401ks, our 403bs. We call everything, every sort of investment, we call it to be filled with plenty and our presses burst forth with new wine. Thank you, Lord God, for new wine. I decree and declare over you that you are abundantly supplied according to Proverbs chapter 3 and 9 and 10 in the Amplified. All right, so for those of you who desire employment, here you go. I decree and declare over you now that you dissolve and put aside all negative, limiting beliefs about where you can work, where you will work, and what kind of job is available to you. I decree and declare that you open yourself to all of God's possibilities possibilities that he has made for you that have been written in the books in heaven I decree and declare that you open yourself to all of those possibilities and I decree and declare for a perfect satisfying well-paying jobs and positions to manifest in your lives in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that you are always at the right place at the right time for the Spirit of God directs your steps according to Proverbs 16 and 9 and Romans 5 and 7. So God, we just decree and declare these things over us on today. I decree and declare that your people are filled with the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom, all the wisdom they need and spiritual understanding to go forth to achieve what we have decreed and declared on today. And we thank you that your will is for us to be prosperous financially, physically, socially, mentally, spiritually, according to Colossians 1 and 19. Thank you, Lord God, that as we immediately respond in faith to the guidance of the Holy Spirit that is within us, we are always at the right place at the right time because our steps. Thank you, Lord God, that you are ordering our steps according to your word, according to where you tell us to go, Lord. And that's Psalm 37 and 23. We thank you, Lord God. For your unfailing, unlimited resources of supply. We thank you, Jesus, that we are increasing because of the blessing that is over our lives on today. In Jesus' name, we thank you that the promises are yes and amen. And we thank you, Lord God, that it is your faith. It is faith. It is the faith of God. It is the faith of we have that has been given to us the very same measure. It says in Romans, we have the, the same measure of faith that our God has. We all have the measure of faith. And we thank you, Lord God, that the faith that you have given us, which is your faith, makes us to be on level playing fields in this level playing fields in this earth. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. So if you know somebody who could um benefit from those things that I decreed, which were to eliminate debt, to collect money that is owed to them, whether it's from the state, I don't care who it's from, it come into your hands in Jesus' name, to pay your bills on time, to sell any sort of property, or to buy anything that you need to purchase, to remove any hindrances, to call your paycheck excuse me, your finances to increase, to increase your investments, bank accounts, or for those, excuse me, who in, who desire employment or better employment, why don't you tag them in this so that they can see the first couple of minutes of this and be partakers of what you just 
um, partook. Amen? Now say amen. I receive it. All right. So on today, I said we we're going to do a checkup of how you living. What? How you living? How are you living in 2024? How are you doing so far? How is it going? Is it is it harder than you thought it would be, or is it going like you you thought it would go? Um, is it uh, giving you twists and turns already? Because we're all, we're only in the second month and the seventh day of the second month of 2024. But how is it working out for you? Well, let's talk about how you're living, and let's bump that up and go to another level. In this year of 2024 in the very beginning of the year so that we won't be stumbling by the time September, August, and November get here. Amen and amen. So how are you living? So this is a checkup. Let's check our spiritual health today. That's why I wanted you to get your Bible and I want you to get something to write with. Make sure, please, I want you to write this down. I mean, this is only if you want to be a partaker of this, okay? But um, this, we're going to check our spiritual health on today. So consider, I want you to consider, what have you been thinking? What have you been saying? How have you been approaching that which God wants to? you to believe for i'm gonna say it again what have you been thinking what's been your thoughts what have you been saying and how are you approaching that which god wants you to believe for it's really good okay because remember we're out here on this faith walk so faith has to do everything with believing Believing what the Lord God has said. So, God wants us, of course, he wants us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He wants us to be strong and he wants us to stand in faith. Okay? Declaring the end from the beginning, just like he did when he was talking to Abraham. He declared the end from the beginning. And he wants us to, and he wants to stand by and watch his word. And I don't mean stand by as a someone who's just looking and not helping. He wants to see his word in 2024 work, really work in your life. Amen. So some essential steps. These are a few steps. It's about five of them I got for you. To do a checkup on how you're living. All right. In 2024. And these steps, if you do this and you walk them out consistently, you will see results. All right? Glory to God. You will see results. I'm a living witness. Okay? So the first one is we have to be believing in our heart. Believe in your heart. That's number one. Write that down. Believe in your heart. Now, of course, where does that come from? Mark 11. <laughs> Is that something strange to us? Mark 11, 22 through 25, which says, have the faith of God. You And in the Greek, you have the faith of God. And you say to this mountain, throw yourself into the sea. If you believe, you receive, you have what you ask. All right. So, but I'm not going to go there all the way. It says, when we desire, when we desire something, then pray about it. Our belief comes from our hearts. Did you know that? When you're desiring something, because remember I asked you at the very beginning, how are you approaching that which God wants you to believe for this year? All right? That's the number one question. How are you approaching it? How are you living to get it? Okay? So when you desire, when we desire something, and then we pray for it, our belief for that thing comes from our hearts. Not this ticker right here, but 1 Peter 3 and 4 says, is referring to our inner man. The uh, Peter calls it the hidden man of the heart. 
That's what we're talking about. So when we are praying, it all it says in verse 25 of Mark 11 that when we pray, that we have to first forgive anyone that we're holding a grudge against. Now, do you ever do that when you start praying before the Lord? Do you say, Lord, I just forgive whoever. I, I forgive the lady on the road. I forgive, you know, whoever. If you have not already forgiven them. So when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against. Now you have to pay attention because when you start praying, does Holy Spirit ever bring people to your mind? And sometimes the people that he brings to your mind are people that you mm, don't feel too good about or that you feel some type of way about. And let me, t- let me just give you this a very simple scenario of of feel some type of way. You might not dislike them, but you may dislike the things that they do. Um, When, when the Holy Spirit brings somebody to your mind and you think about how they are, let's give an example, disobedient. When, so, so you begin praying and, and I'm praying. And then the thing that I think of, somebody pops into my mind. And when I think of that person, the first thing that comes to mind is disobedient. Well, I'm offended at the fact that they're disobedient. Well, that is housing unforgiveness in my heart. So you know what I need to do at that moment and say, you know what, Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Because if you were them, you wouldn't be doing what they're doing. Okay? You know how people say, if that was me, I wouldn't do that. Well, if that was you, you probably wouldn't do that. Because you think differently. But, But that person does that because that's the way they think so forgive them for that and then go ahead so go ahead and forgive them so that unforgiveness is not in your heart and doesn't interfere with the working of your faith so come back up here to hear mark 11 22 through 25 because it says you have to believe in your heart so unforgiveness That is why in verse 25 of Mark 11, the very last thing God gives them as instruction of this law of faith is, and when you stand praying, forgive. So that. He told you how to to believe by faith, and then he tells you, oh, oh, but what, 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 don't just say to this mountain, be removed. You also have to forgive in your heart because faith does not work in an unbelieving heart. And you might say, how do you know that? God is saying it right here in Mark 11, verse 25. If he is telling us in 22, verse 22 of Mark 11, that you have the faith of God, have faith in God, and then say to this mountain and tell it and believe that you receive and you shall have what you want. Then he, lastly, he says, I know a lot of times we skip over that, but it's very important the, the, the way in which God says things in the Bible. So he is telling us something of vital importance. He doesn't come out and say, hey, faith can't work in an unforgiving heart. Or, so God can't do anything if your heart is all toe up with something. He doesn't say that. He simply gives you the instruction, the law of faith, which is you, say, you believe you receive in your heart. You say it with your mouth. Bless the Lord. And then he tells you, but you need to make sure that you forgive. Okay? So that's the first thing. Believing in your heart. Because what faith does not work in an unbelieving heart. Number two. You have to say it with your mouth. Now again, I'm going to bring back to the reference. Why are we talking about this? How you live in. Because how are you approaching that which God wants for you, wants you to believe for in 2024. Put that at the top of your paper so you can always refer back to why I'm going through this list. How are, how you living? How are you approaching that which God wants you to believe for in 2024? All right. So number two, say it with your mouth. So number one was believe in your heart. And the biggest takeaway from that was get the forgiveness out. When you are praying, if Holy Spirit brings something to your mind, get it out. Number two, say it with your mouth. 
in Mark 11, 22 through 23. It reads, we know what it says, but you believe that those things he says shall come to pass. All right. What I want you to bring, what I want to bring your attention to is this. Jesus told us in those two verses to believe only once. Go and read it for yourself. He said to believe only once. And then he repeated the word say three times. So he was telling us how to exercise our faith. Remember Mark 11, 20, it's like the law of faith. How to use it, how to, how to use it. Amen? So he's three times he says, say, say, say. Remember last week we talked about you can't have those silent, we can't silently pray. You have to say. Amen? You have to give voice to words. Amen? So, so Jesus told us to believe once. And then he said, say out of your mouth three times in Mark 11, 23 through 24. Then we keep, he says to keep saying it as long as it takes to see the physical manifestation of what you're believing you, you're saying. So I know a lot of times we learned in church Stop saying the same thing. We don't tell them the same thing. Stop saying the same thing. Stop saying the same thing. Okay. Now, if you're saying the same thing and not having in your heart that you're believing for it, now that's something different. But when you say it out of your mouth, the more you say it and you hear yourself say it, the believer that is on the inside of you, this mechanism that God has placed on the inside of you when you were born again that causes you to believe is going to start waking up as you're saying. What it, whatever it is that you're believing for, okay? So, it's important that this is not after you see it. You have to be saying it before you see it. Because you have to remember, faith is not, you don't, you don't, you don't have to have faith for what you can actually see. Faith is for what you cannot see. Amen? And it's not that you can't, that it's not really there. It is there. Because God is the creator of all things. And he's not going to tell you to say something or believe for something that he, that is, he cannot manifest in your life. Amen? So it's not after we, so it's important that not after we see it and not after we feel it, but we have to say it and believe that we've received it. Before it even comes into our hands. Amen. So God wants us to find the answer to our prayers. In the word of God. Before we ever pray the prayer of faith. Have you ever thought of that? Before you just start rambling off praying. Have you ever gone. Or sat for a moment. And let a scripture bubble up in your spirit. And say okay God. What, what would you have me to, to declare to you. What would you have me to say to you about this thing? Have you ever gone into the word before, before you just randomly start praying for whatever it is you're believing for? Have you gone to find the answer in God's word before you just start praying? Any old thing. Because remember, Jesus talks to them about your, your saying many things is like, it does nothing if you're just randomly just saying things. And I'm asking that because how are you living? How are you approaching that which God wants for you, wants you to believe for in 2024? So God wants us to find the answer to our prayers in the word of God, in the Bible. Before we ever start praying the prayer of faith. And then he wants us to consistently believe it and declare it. So that means you can declare it again and again and again. So you're not just saying, okay, God, give to me, give to me, give to me. You're now, once you declare it, you say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that my body is healed and made well. I thank you that my bills are paid on time and in full because you are a covenant keeping God. I am in covenant with you. Just like I was um, Isaac or Jacob, God, I thank you that even in famine, just like them, 
You in covenant with them, and I thank you that you you have your your seed will never be begging for bread. Thank you, Lord God, that I'm in covenant with you. So you, that's all you're saying over again, that I am a covenant, that you're a covenant-keeping God. Thank you, Lord God, that I'm in covenant with you. Thank you, Lord God, that you speak things that be not as though they were. You just continually thank him and say it. Amen? Because all the promises, according to 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, are yes and amen. All right. So the third thing is, receive whatever it is you're believing for. Remember? How you living? How you living? How are you going about receiving that thing that God has told you to believe him for in 2024? So the third thing is, for your checkup of how you living, is to receive it by faith. Okay? So, Matthew 21 through 22 says, you can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you'll receive it. Well, Let's break that down a little bit. You must receive what you're believing God for and what you're speaking into existence by faith. Y'all, faith is something that is very important. I know I've mentioned to you many times before that I always give myself a faith tune-up. It can be weekly. It can be every two weeks. Especially, let me tell you when I realize that I need a faith tune-up. If I am like needing something, I'm, I'm needing something from the Lord. I'm believing the Lord for something. I'm believing for breakthrough in an area. Uh, there's just something that I need. And it's like I can't grasp it. When I pray, I, I'm praying for it. I'm, giving, I'm, I'm praying for it and I'm believing for it, but I'm still unsettled about it. I'm unsettled about it and I don't believe it. I have all of these thoughts in my mind that are contrary to what I am believing for. Okay? So, say it is about a bill. Let's use it as an example. Okay? Um, I know I need to hear and fine-tune my faith. Mm -hmm. I need to get it a little meatier. If I am praying and, and I've said to the Lord, okay... Lord, I thank you. I thank you for meeting this need. I thank you for bringing this money in. Um, I thank you for bringing in $300 in Jesus' name um, for whatever bill, for the, I don't know, the light bill. Jesus, I hope your light goes not, but it might be, bless the Lord. Thank you for bringing in $300 for this light bill. And I thank you that you meet all of my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because I'm a tither, because I'm a sower, thank you, Lord God, that the, the devourer is rebuked for my sake. Now, I can say all that and not believe it. Did you know that? Yeah, I said a whole bunch of scripture right there. But I can still be uneasy in my heart. Not this heart, but inside of me. That means I can have no peace about it. So when that happens to me, it gives me, a, a, it's like a bell goes off. Kendra, you need to get somewhere and you need to sit with the Lord for a second. Because some, you need to get your eyes on some word because something is off. If I'm having all of these thoughts of grandeur like, oh my God, they're going to cut my lights off. My lights going to get cut off. Oh, oh God, what am I going to do? And then your mind is racing. Who can you go ask for it? Who can, where can you get it from? Can I call Nashville Works? Can I call uh, the, the, the the Catholic Charities? Can I call, um, who, where can I get it from? Do you think that if I go out and just and, and drive, maybe I can pick up, you know, Uber or something. Maybe I can do that and drive all night for the next three nights and maybe I can get it. And Okay, that is an unsettled heart. And I don't, I'm not talking about this ticker. I'm talking about your inner man. That thing is unsettled. And it is not believing it has received what I did all that praying and asking for. Remember before that I said, oh, I'm a covenant keeper. Oh, I'm giving. I'm a tither. I'm a sower. I'm a giver. But what was I doing in my thinking? Because what I'm thinking is the dominance of what I'm believing. Woo! What I am thinking supersedes what I'm 
actually believe. When I say supersedes, what I'm thinking is actually what I'm believing. I was listening to a sermon today, and the pastor was talking about your heart and what you what you really believe in. And the Lord told him, He said to him one day, "You know." What you actually don't say out of your mouth is what you actually believe. And he was like, excuse me? What did you say to me? I have just declared 25 scriptures about me being made well. And my healing is in my body. But Jesus, the, you know, through the Holy Spirit, he said to him, no, it is what you, what he said, it is what you are thinking. It is what your thoughts are is what you actually believe. Have you ever thought of that? That is what you actually are believing. So I could be saying 25 script healing scriptures, but in my mind, I could be thinking, I'm going to die. I just know I am. And I think an example the pastor used in this sermon was, do you think anybody would, I wonder if anybody would come to my funeral. That's what you're believing. That's really what you believe in. Because what you're saying out your mouth and what you're believing in your heart or what you're thinking in your mind, they, they're not the same. A double-minded man receives nothing from the Lord. So this is a, 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 a little thing, a little mantra that I adopted from um, one of my mentors in the ministry. They say every day over their body, I receive. I feel good. I feel fine. Body, you get in line. In Jesus' name. I feel good. I feel fine. Body, you get in line. That is a great confession to release your faith after you've read healing scriptures. Bless the Lord. So, let's talk about Mark chapter 5. Jairus and this lady with the issue of blood. Because these two these are some big, heavy, hidden healing examples in the Bible that are so meaty. I don't even know if we can, if we have exhausted what God wants us to um, understand about them. In Mark chapter five, one of the rulers of the synagogue. So this man, he's a ruler of the synagogue. So he's not, he's not a stranger to God. Okay, but he's a ruler of the synagogue, and of course, his name is Jairus. Jairus, and the lady with the issue of blood. The, both of their stories collide, but there's something wonderful about both of their stories, and it is the faith in which both of these people have. So Jairus comes to Jesus. Can you imagine falling at his feet? He comes to find him. And all these crowds of people. And he says, Jesus, my daughter is lying at the, at the point of death. She's about to die. I know. Here, here, woo. He said, I know. And how does he know? Because of what he's been hearing about Jesus. Hear and be healed. How you hear will be measured to you. Oh, okay. So, he said, so he's been hearing about Jesus. He comes and he finds Jesus. And he says, I need you to come and lay your hands on her that she might be healed. Y'all, there was no doubt in this man's mind that if Jesus came and put his hands on on her. He had already made up in his mind. I'm trying to tell you all the way on his walk from his house where his daughter was lying on the bed like daddy please. I don't know what the little girl was talking. I don't know if she was coughing up blood. Who knows what she was doing. She might have had a fever that was out of this world. They might have had the little girl packed in ice. It didn't matter. That daddy was like move out of the way and all the way from the house leaving that little girl's bedside to him finding Jesus wherever he was. Hear what I'm saying. This man rehearsed over and over and over. He said and said and said. He might not even been saying it out loud. He might have been saying it inside. Remember God said, is what you actually, your thoughts that you have, is what you believe. This man believed that when he found Jesus 
and asked Jesus. And then he believed that Jesus would come to his house. Y'all, t- listen to this. This is Jesus. I don't even know how far away J. Iris's house was from where they were. It could have been a day's journey. Who knows? But J. Iris had gotten into his mind on the journey all the way over there. When I ask him to come, he is going to come. When I ask him to, I, I just know, I'm going to ask him to come and I'm going to ask him to lay his hand on her. And at the very moment, at the, at the point of contact, when Jesus puts his hand on her, I know she will be healed and she will live. That's what he said. He spoke his faith. He spoke what he believed in Mark 5 and 23. His faith, his faith statement was, she will live. When you come, come on with me. I know you're going to come. Come on with me. Put your hand on my baby and she will live. That was his faith statement. So listen to this, because we remember we talked about forgiveness. We talked about feeling some type of way. All right, so on the way to J. Iris' house, remember I said, I don't know if it's a day away. We don't know how far it is, but we do know the little girl is lying on the, the, her deathbed, okay? She, she, she's breaths away from going, from going, all right, to the other side. So as Jesus is walking with J. Iris, to his house, three miles, five miles, a day journey, whatever it is. The woman with the, this woman with the issue of blood, who had already been devising this thing in her mind. I'm trying to tell you. She heard about, listen, these are not people who just decided, oh, let me do this. No, 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 no. They had some time. And, and it might have even been an, only an hour. I don't know. But they bit down on this, but th- what they believed so much that this lady with the issue of blood was like, I just know. I'm trying to tell you. I, don't, I can't even tell them because if I tell my friends, my friends are going to say, girl, now girl, now girl, you know you're not supposed to be outside. Because if you get caught, I'm trying to let you know, it's going to go down in the DM. Okay, it's going to be bad. So she couldn't tell. Imagine this. She couldn't tell her friends. And she probably didn't have any because she was smelling like Blood all the time. So she, she didn't have anybody to tell. Okay? And she couldn't tell it. So all she could do is say over and over in her mind, if I just know, if I can get to this man, and if I can touch, I don't have to touch his back. I don't have to touch his arm. I don't have to touch his hand. I need to touch the hem of his garment. Now, if many of y'all know, if, if you know exactly what that, it was like a prayer shawl. The little things that dangle off the bottom of the prayer shawl. This lady knew that if I just can touch just the smallest thing, the hem of his garment. If I can touch the very bottom of his prayer shawl thing. Now, first of all, imagine what Jesus is looking like rolling through these people with all this good, good linen on. Okay? Jesus was not poor. Anyway, I just want to put that in there. Just imagine, she is she is saying this in her mind. We don't know how far she lived either. Okay? But she knew she was taking a chance. She knew this was her last, her last chance. She was going to die. She was broke. She had given everybody her money. I'm sure she had everybody under the sun pray for her. And do every kind of ritual there could that there, there could be done. And she was just like, okay, I have heard so much about this man. Somebody even, he even, he they tore his roof off of his house and he didn't even yell at them. He just healed the person and told them to get up and their sins are, are forgiven. Okay, if that is, you know, because imagine that's going to spread near and far. That, that, that happened and Jesus didn't say, hey, 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 who's going to fix my roof? He didn't do any of that. He simply said to the man, your sins be forgiven. Now get on up. So she, she had heard these great things about this man. And she was just like, I know. I know. She said it to herself over and over and over again. At the moment, I touch him. Not his body, but a piece of his clothing. The piece near the ground. 
as soon because I'm gonna have to crawl because I'm weak. It's not like I can. She probably couldn't even stand up. Can you imagine bleeding like that all that time? How how weak would you be? And I don't even know. You know how they have blood transfusions now. And if you listen on the radio, because of the ice storm and all that, and people had surgeries, they've been asking for donations of blood. Because when people have surgeries, they need to have blood on hand. But anyway, so this lady, and you know, as I was meditating on this today, I was like, maybe all she could kind of do was crawl. Or maybe she just wanted to lay low. You better lay low. She, maybe she just wanted to, you know... Get on down so people really couldn't see her. Because if she stood up, somebody was going to see that she was the lady with the issue of blood. And start hollering out and saying, you can't be here. You can't be here. But she she thought about it. And she thought about it. And she thought about it all the way over there. And she was like, if I just touch. If I touch. If I touch the little tip of his clothes. If I touch it, I'm going to be made whole. I know that. She said, if I touch his clothes, I'm going to be made whole. And that's in verse 25 through 28 of Mark chapter 5. Her faith statement was, I shall be whole. She had already decided that that's what it was going to be. I'm going to be whole. As soon as I touch. She, she, she spoke it by faith. She, she released her faith and didn't even know she was releasing faith. So both J. Iris and this woman with the issue of blood received what they wanted by faith. They believed it and they spoke it. And they didn't just speak it once. I told you, imagine if that was you. You would be speaking that over and over and over and over and over again because you would actually have to get the courage up to do it, right? She needed to get her courage up, herself up, to even go outside and be in public because she wasn't supposed to be there. J. Iris, who was supposed to be this big man in the synagogue, I'm sure had to put his pride aside to go ask this man, Jesus, who they talk about, to come put his hand on this little girl. So can you imagine if J. Iris, when, when the lady with the issue of blood touched Jesus, and Jesus stopped in his tracks as Jairus' little daughter is sitting, is, is on her deathbed. Jesus stops and starts looking around like, who touched me? Who did that? Whoever did that, faith was released and, and the anointing released from my body. S something has happened. What is it? He knew something drastic had happened to somebody. So he is doing this. And can you imagine J. Iris as he's standing there like, what would you have been doing? Like, what the crap? You might have been saying, what is happening? She, can you please come on, Jesus? So he had to stop. He could have gotten offended at the fact that this woman stopped the journey to his daughter. <laughs> because Jesus wanted to know what had, ta take, had, had happened. He could have taken offense. Listen, y'all, would you have taken offense if there was a hiccup in your plan? He would have taken offense at Jesus stopping to see who touched him. He would have been in unforgiveness and he would have had unforgiveness in his heart. And what he had declared by faith would not have worked for his daughter. It would block, it block, unforgiveness blocks faith from working. Feeling some type of way, offense, anger, whatever word you want to use that, that, that constitutes feeling some type of way blocks faith from moving, from working. So with his daughter's life hanging, hanging there, it was essential that Jairus stay in faith and stay in the place of receiving by faith. So then after the, the, the after all of this had happened, remember, as they're walking, now they're on their journey again, somebody from the house comes up with this rabbity news and says, your daughter, she died, I'm so sorry. She died. Y'all, Jesus, J. Iris could have been offended, angry, and mad. And could have turned to Jesus and started yelling at him. Could have been offended at the lady. 
I mean, all of these things could have happened. And immediately, Jesus gives him instruction on how we are supposed to continue to let our faith move and not stifle it. Jesus responds to him and says, do not be afraid. That's, that's the end of the law. So, so here we go. Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, 25. And then add this in about not being afraid from Mark chapter 5, 36 is your law of faith of how you are going to approach that which God wants you to believe from him for 2024. Bless the Lord. So if Jesus' response to what looked like a hopeless situation was to J. Iris, don't be afraid, just have faith then we have to remember that for us. Always remember to stop the fear. Embrace faith. Write this down. Stop the fear. Embrace the faith, whatever it is you had released, and you'll receive what you are believing for. Y'all, that is major. The fourth thing is speak to things that do not exist as though they do. Romans 4.17 says, God who gives life to the, to the dead calls things. Y'all, when I, I don't know. I've read this scripture so many times. But a few weeks ago, the Holy Spirit, it, there was light on it. I was like, God gives life to the dead. God, our God called things that don't exist as though they did. Y'all, that blew my mind. Romans 4. That, I don't know why I've read it so many times, but it blew my mind. So God wants us to call things as they should be, not as they are. Otherwise, things are going to stay like they are. So when we declare the truth of God's word about our lives, rather than the physical reality of what we see, it releases faith. And our faith produces results. So we speak to the mountains in our life. We command them to be thrown in the sea. And then we watch what happens. So lastly, apply corresponding action. So you see, the, number five is to apply corresponding action. See faith by itself is not enough. You have to have corresponding action. It says faith without works is dead. Faith without corresponding action, you're doing something, yields the results, does not yield the results you're believing for. So you have to be sure that your faith and your actions are working together because actions make our faith complete. What did the lady with the issue of blood, she kept saying, if I touch the hem of his garment, if I touch the hem of his garment, if I touch the hem of his garment, well, if she never got out there to go touch the hem of his garment, she would have never been healed. Right? She would have never been healed if she didn't take action on what she believed. On, on what she believed. So keep believing God and his word. Keep declaring his word over your situation. And call those things that don't exist as though they do. Never be moved by what you see or by what you feel. Only be moved by what you believe you receive based on the word of God. Amen and amen. Now get your communion. Woo! That touched me today. Bless me. It blessed me. So how you living? Hey, how you living? How are you approaching what God has told you to believe for in 2024? Amen? So let's take our communion if I can get this open maybe. Yeah? Okay. Good. So, Father, we thank you for the broken body of Christ Jesus that was broken so that our bodies are made well. You said in your word, as often as we do it, we are doing it in remembrance of you. And as often as we do it, God, we are confessing and professing the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. We have the resurrection life of Christ living in our bodies. Now partake. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, for resurrection Resurrection life. Resurrection power. Thank you, Lord God. Ooh, that it lives on the inside of us. Woo, Jesus. 
We thank you for the blood of Jesus shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you that our sins are forgiven. Because they are forgiven, they are far from us, never to be held against us. And we can receive by faith because of the blood of Jesus and drink. Bless the Lord. We thank you. I thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget this Friday at 7 p.m. at the church building, 806 Meadow Lark Lane. That is Goodlettsville, Tennessee at 7 p.m. We have Encounter. You might say, what is Encounter? It is a night of prof prophecy. It's a night of dream interpretation. It is a night of healing, laying hands on, impartation. That's what Encounter is. It is a night of the supernatural. It is a night of the prophetic. It is a night of, of things of the spirit, okay? That's all it is. Things of the spirit. Dreams being interpreted. If you have your dreams, then that's when you need to come and give them to them, okay? Dreams that need to be interpreted. You bring a notebook. If you if you need prayer for uh, healing in your body, hey, if you need a prophetic word, if you desire a prophetic word, if you're looking for a prophetic word from the Lord, hey, we will have ministers there on deck. Don't forget to bring your phone and your recorder so you can get that prophetic word from the Lord. Amen? Again, don't, don't want to miss it. This coming Friday. What is the date of Friday? I don't really know. But this Friday, the Friday, like tomorrow's Thursday and the next day is Friday, at 7 p.m., 806 Meadow Art Lane, Goodlettsville, Tennessee, Pursuit First Presence Ministry. So, again, you don't have to go to our church to come to this. If you have dreams, you need them interpreted. If you need a prophetic word, if you want a prophetic word, if you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit, what if this is, a not, this is what encounter is for. All right, I love you, Jesus loves you, and I want you to remember that faith living is good living. Have a great rest of your night, and I'll see you on Friday at Encounter.